And so I began to explore personally and, and really study families uh, historically that have persisted in, in working together as a team and just been absolutely blown away by the outsized uh, impact they've had. And, and also the, there's a beauty to it that I think I just was attracted to, which was the idea that familiar relationships could sit at the center of your life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's looking for, you know, identity in our culture. And what we tell people culturally is you have to find that in the workplace as an individual. You can't, you can't build your identity in any way that's associated with other, other people um, because people are unreliable. And the whole point of getting married and making a covenant and having children is to actually create a center of relationships that is reliable. So why, and, and this, and so there's a, there's a bit of a tension here, which is, is you can understand why families are falling apart. In other words, if, if you basically entered into an agreement to get married, have children for the sake of having these deep permanent relationships, and then you believe that the meaning in your life is found outside of those relationships and always to be pursued outside the family and in, in the workplace or in other identities that you, you can experience as an individual, then it isn't surprising that that original set of permanent relationships is going to feel impermanent. And if, especially if it gets in the way of, of identities that you're pursuing outside the family, then it, it seems almost like obvious that it needs to uh, come at, that, that, that those relationships then become unhealthy and you need to separate from those people, mm -hmm. even if they're your spouse or your children or your parents. Um, and this is a very new idea. And I'm looking, I'm looking at this saying, again, my, my, my point here isn't to say that uh, it's obvious that the family is, is, a, is a better context for identity. I'm just saying, man, it's not obvious to me that the individual, we, we figured it out when we made this transition. Yeah. Um, and so we're kind of like a bit of a living experiment. You know, I live, we live with my parents. We're, we're trying to figure this out. Um, and I, I, I'm, I am more convinced than ever that, that there are really healthy and really um, very uh, meaningful ways to pursue life uh, in and through the family, as opposed to uh, just through your identity as an individual. Yeah. I love that. I mean, you talk about that work identity uh, in your book, and I want to dive into that a little bit uh, as well. But I really want to dive into, so let's just say someone's really listening right now and, and they want to do this. They want a family team and uh, they've been finding their identity outside of the home. And you kind of really talk about that family team mission or that family team uh, vision. Uh, and it's funny because I've tried to do a little bit of this with my family and I own my own business and we're always talking about vision and our mission statement and our core values. And we're always talking about those things. And when I've tried to bring it into the family, it just seems maybe I'm not as consistent uh, with it. And it seems like it's just more difficult for me it, yeah. to incorporate it within the family because, you know, you because maybe they're just not entrepreneurs they're not business people. I have little kids and I'm like, well, they, they don't understand this. And, and, you know, right. and it's just chaotic most of the time. So, so let's talk about that. Like how do you incorporate the family team vision? Yeah, that certainly is a challenge because it's the problem with trying to integrate these things into the family is that you're always going to feel like an immigrant in your own family at some level, because you're imposing on your family, something you didn't grow up with. And that, that can feel very strange. <laughs> so I think the first thing I always say to guys is, and women who try to do this is, it's going to feel weird. Um, and you're going to have to take the hit. And you're, some generation has to take the hit to bring to re restore this. And by the hit, I mean feeling a little like, like a foreigner. Um, like my kids, this is very normal to them. Mm -hmm. Like they grew up in a, in a family team. They, they know what that's like. They, they value it. They, they make very native decisions um, as members of a family team. Um, for me, all those decisions are really kind of intentional and at least at first feel a little bit awkward and, um, and tough. So, so I think, first of all, just saying, yes, th there's going to be years of, of that kind of tension you're going to feel um, like, oh, this doesn't feel like the right place for this or something. And that's why I, I spent so much time immersing myself in stories of multi-generational families that have done this historically, because part of that is just trying to overcome that feeling of, of awkwardness or whatever. Um, and then I would say, uh, in terms of like, you know, I, I, I think one way to think about, um, the family mission thing is 
I, I really like to ask, like, does your family have any assignments? Like sometimes it can feel too much to say, what's our mission? Like, let's go away on a retreat and like write the ep epic mission statement for mm -hmm. our family. Yeah. Some, sometimes th that's tough. And sometimes that could actually be kind of destructive because um, as new members come into your family and people begin to like with new kids or marriages or whatever, th there is going to be a shift mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what the makeup of our family. And so sometimes, you know, that that, that shift can feel weird because the who preexisted the, the why or the what, you know, and that's what's interesting about family. Again, that's one of the di dynamics of having a having a, an identity that comes from relationships first. And so you never want, you know, the what um, of the family to destroy the who, you know, this is right. the one place where that doesn't get to happen. You know, you don't fire your kids, for example, right? like you might in a, in a business. And so you have to, so you can insert mission into this context, but I think it has to be done with a lot of respect for the, the relationships. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is bring to my family assignments I feel like I have or missions that I feel called to, and then to begin to, to probe with the family what things we can do together. And then what, what we like to do is just dial up our focus on shared mission. Mm -hmm. So if me and my wife or you know my kids, we feel like we can do this together, it starts to get more and more of my attention. Instead of just asking like, what do I feel like doing or what am I passionate about personally? Those kinds of questions being the only thing that drives my decision making. And I don't want anyone else to have any you know influence over that. Instead, we, and this is why we started doing family teams, honestly, because you know, this was just something that I have a lot of things I'm passionate about, but this is one thing that I can do with my wife, with my kids. Um, and there's other things. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we got into, I got into real estate investing. I, you know, I'm not particularly excited about properties, but my son is in the trades and loves that stuff mm -hmm. and wants to work with his hands. And so, uh, you know, I'm starting, so that's something I do enjoy it. I, it's just, I mean, most of our businesses have been more in the tech world and there's no one in my family at this point that's like super invested in that. So I just started shifting, you know, my attention to, to areas where their Venn diagram overlaps with, with, with my family. And then similar with missions, if there's like passions we have, like our, our family, you know, we spent, you know, a lot of time living in Israel and that's a very deeply shared passion. You know, all, all of my kids have studied Hebrew. They, they all absolutely love immersing themselves in that culture and they're trying to understand, you know, uh, things from, from the kind of a Middle Eastern perspective. Um, and so there's a lot of, um, a lot of investment went in that as I watched my kids come alive, as I watched my wife come alive. And so it's kind of a dance as opposed to like, uh, you know, like, um, sort of carving that on in stone yeah. and then telling your family do this if we're going to be, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that, that's a little too intense. <laughs> no, I definitely agree. Well, I want to dive down. So there, there's some different like resources and tools that you, you've you talked about. So one is you get the vision and then you, you come together as your family, kind of have that that board meeting, that meeting. So talk about that, what that looks like. I mean, so in my business, our team meets once a week. We talk about higher level things, little vision. But what's a yeah. family board meeting look like? Yeah, so we do kind of a family team meeting every every week on Sunday at 11 at 11 a.m. And, um, you know, we get together and this is includes our five kids, um, plus anyone who's living in our house, got two nephews living with us right now. So it's a, you know, it's evolved over time as a you know, kids kind of got introduced to the meeting when they turned about eight or nine years old. Um, before that was just me and my wife. And so basically it's carved into a couple segments. So I just do highs and lows. I really want to teach my kids again, relationships first. The whole point of this is that we're listening to each other. We love each other. So I really encourage the kids to ask each other questions that they're surprised by someone's higher or lower. Don't, like, oh, tell me more about that. So it's about 15 minutes where everyone kind of just catches us up on, you know, what's going on in their life and how they're feeling and make sure that, you know, we're really up to speed on that. Um, and then we move from that into, we just call it, it's an acronym CAV, call it CAV, just so we, we can remember it. Um, but it goes calendar announcements vision. Um, it took us a while to figure out that that's a really, because I didn't want to come, I didn't want to prepare for this meeting. And so what, what, what was really cool is I'll show up and then see his calendar. So we'll look at the next couple of weeks in our calendar. You know, we'll look at our rhythm, like what's going to, what's going to happen. And oftentimes that leads to, oh, I forgot to announce that, oh, this happened this week, or this is going to happen in a couple of weeks or next month we're doing this, or have you guys heard about this? You know, this is impacting our calendar. And then, then, off, then what would oftentimes happen is some of the, you know, let's say we said, okay, we're, we're, guys, we're going to host this thing. It's going to be cool. I need your help. You know, we're going to, you know, have some friends over, we're going to do this. And 
one of my kids might say like, I don't know if I really want to do that or whatever. And then my wife would always say, Hey, Jeremy, I don't think that they've heard the vision for this. Mm. So that happened so many times that I'm like, Oh, let's just make that a part of it. So, so, so usually there's one or two things that, that are on the calendar that we're trying to do as a team that we want our kids to voluntarily, you know, opt in or not. I mean, it's up to them, but we don't want to make it a, you know, a requirement. And so, but I do want to have the chance to just cast the vision. Mm. So, so I do a lot of vision casting at that point. So I spend like five minutes just kind of, Hey guys, this is the big picture. This is why we're doing this. This is what your engagement would look like. This is why we'd love to do it with you. If you're, you know, if you're too busy or, you know, there's other things you have going on, but there's a constant, like what I like to think of is just as more of a gravitational pull towards the family team instead of like this rigid, like thou shalt, you know, bend mm. thy life around our family. Like, I don't want it to be a power control thing. I want it to be very like, like um, inviting and exciting. Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below and I'm gonna try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do every single week. I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.